G'day guys, it's Jake here. Today I'm gonna to be taking you through how to create a Teams live event and also how to start the event and host the event. So what a Teams live event is, is it's more like the Teams version of hosting a webinar where normally when you run a meeting, everybody's in the meeting and they all have access to the camera and audio and stuff like that and everyone can talk backwards and forwards. The Teams live event is more of a webinar style event. So if you wanna host a webinar, you can have a lot more people online in the live event. You can also run an event to the public or also to a certain group. So to schedule the live event, what we'll do is we just click, not there. We click this little drop down here on the right and say new live event. And then we give it a title, so. And if you want to give it time, location, let's give it the time zone that I'm actually in. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Then you can put some details in. And put in the time and date that you want it to start. And also invite any other presenters that are gonna be presenters in your group. So this can be quite useful if you have more than one or two people that are gonna be presenting, and also to invite somebody that can answer the Q&A and also manage the back end of the presentation or the webinar that you're delivering, rather than one person trying to do that while they're also trying to deliver content. Um, it does make it quite a lot easier if you have an extra person to actually run the back end and you know answer chats and Q&As and all that. So if we go next, here we have our options of what type of permissions. So you can have it so only the people in groups have permissions that are invited. So you just put in the person there. You can type in a bunch of emails if you want. So I don't know whatever you want to put in there. Or you can have organization wide. So that'll be anybody who's inside of your Office 365 tenant. So if you wanted to run a webinar for people inside of your organization, but you didn't want people outside to be able to see that, you want to choose the org wide one and public like it sounds is anybody can access it so anybody with the link they don't need to sign in they can sign in if they want but they don't need to sign in they can just access it anonymously so this next part um, you can pick your different options so some of these may be enabled or may be disabled Oh, also, I've made another uh, video as well for if this is greyed out, the link will be in the description on how to fix that. So this next part here, um, you can select whether the recording's available to attendees and also you can select if they've got the Q&A option there. So that allows them to actually type in questions and answers. If you don't want that in there, which it is not ticked by default, so it's disabled by default, you need to tick it if you do want it in there. That'll allow people to just type in questions and answers. So then if people, uh, if you want to put in a support link, so if you want a custom support link, or you can just use the support link here. So I'll just put in a custom one so you, we can see it. So I'll show you where this comes up when we get to it. And then you just hit schedule. So at this point, you can get the attendee link that you can send to people. And also scroll down and see some information. Um, so here's our dial-in numbers. If you need other numbers, you can click here. And this will take you to all of the dial-in numbers that are available for Microsoft Teams. I'll leave that in the link below as well, so then you can have them. So this is if you don't have audio on your computer or people want to attend by phone, they can just dial in rather than using Teams or using a web app. So now this attendee link, if we click that, that'll copy it to the clipboard. And I'll just open a new window over here. So this is what's gonna happen when people go get this attendee link. They can choose to open it in Microsoft Teams, which we're not going to because Teams is currently logged in as the person who's running the event. Um, or they can just watch it on the web instead. So when they go to the web version, or the web viewer. It will look the same in the Teams viewer as well. Here they can choose to sign in or to join anonymously. So we're gonna join anonymously at this point. 
or they can choose the desktop version. And as you can see, the webinar has not started yet. So up here they have that here's learn some need help link up there. And if they hit this I, that's where your support link, your custom support link comes up. So if I click that, that's gonna take me to where I set my custom support link up to. And it will also tell you the live event details. This little thing here is for the Q&A. Say somebody wants to ask a question, they can hit ask question. They can put in their name if they want to and say, And then when they post it, it will show up in their questions. By default, people's questions won't show up in public. That's something that you will have to allow, you will have to approve the questions for everybody to see them, or you can keep them one-on-one, -on -one, which I'll show you in a moment. So now to actually start the webinar, you just need to open the, uh, the little appointment thing in your calendar and then click join. So at this point, they recommend that you mute your mic before joining, because then you can just turn it on when you're ready, rather than just connecting and having it on by default. So now at the moment we're joining as the producer, so we actually have this management down here. So as you can see down here, that's my camera. If I turned it on, it would be enabled inside of the content. But what we're gonna do here is, I'm going to just put this up and we're going to share our screen. So, now I've shared the screen up here, it's in my content that I can use. And if I'm ready to send that to the live, I can hit send live. So now that's the preview on what you'll see live. This is the preview of what's next in queue. So if I wanted something else to be next in queue, I can put that up there ready to send live and then that will change it over there. So let's say, cool. So what we're gonna do now is start the live session. I'll hit send live and what I'll do as well is I will get this and put it up on the screen. So we can see here, it says that it has not started yet. So it's sent live, but it hasn't actually started yet. So what we wanna to do to start this webinar is hit the start button. So as you can see, once you start the webinar, you can't stop and restart. So you have one chance to start it. Once it's started, it is started. The webinar can last up to four hours and it's gonna be 10 to 20 seconds of delay. So they're not gonna see you exactly live, they're gonna be a little bit behind. So now I've hit continue. And what I'll do is I will paste the link inside of here and we'll just go through. Oh. I'll exit that and we'll share the other screen. And we'll send that live, that'll be better. So now you can see We've got this screen and we're live. That's inside of the webinar now. So in a moment, it should update and show us this screen and go in, in, in to a bunch of stuff. So you can see it's a little bit behind. So what I can do here is see my Q&A. So at the moment, you can see here in the Q&A, we've got one question. So this is not a public question yet. If you want it to be public, 
you can hit publish. If you just want it to be one-on-one, -on -one, then you can do a private reply. But if we go to published, now this will be in the published questions. And I can say reply. And if I go over here, so this is my webinar attendee screen. You can see here the moderator has responded. So that's working. So that's basically it. At the moment as well, you can see my microphone is muted. If I unmute the microphone, now it will be unmuted. And what will happen in about 15 or 20 seconds, you'll start hearing what I actually say repeated back through the speakers. So I'll just mute that again because otherwise it gets quite annoying once it actually catches up. So if I see this, you can see I'm still muted there in the replay. And you can see I was just typing, so that's what I was doing before as it's capturing my screen. So now it's about to unmute. If I unmute the microphone, now it will be unmuted. And I'm what will happen that in about 15 or 20 seconds, you'll start speakers. hearing what I so actually what say is repeated back through the speakers. Back, so I'll just mute annoying. that with two voices running over themselves. So what else we can do here is look at the health and performance of the stream. So at the moment, my estimated send bandwidth is 1.42 megabits, which I might even be able to improve. So this can be something that you might want to check beforehand just to see if you do have enough uh, bandwidth to stream the video. I probably don't because my video still looks a bit blurry. Um, if we move this thing out of the way. You can see here it's got a policy of 50 megabits is the most it can use. So yeah, that's the health. Um, so what we can do now to end or to stop streaming, we can hit end and that will end the live event, which we won't do. If you want to just stop sharing your screen or sharing what your content is, you can hit stop sharing and then you can change the content too. So if you have someone else there, you can change that content and put the other presenter there by getting their stuff and hitting share and selecting what you want them to be able to do. So the full screen if you want to. But yeah, so what we'll do now is just end Oh, as you can see, I moved my access point and I've got a little bit more bandwidth there as well. So anyway, that's basically how you do it. I will end the stream there. So there you go. That's how to actually create a live event and how to run a live event. So then once you're all finished, you can leave. And we'll dismiss that. So yeah, doing a live event is quite simple. You just need to hit the drop down, hit live event, and then run through those different things to create the event. And then you share out that link or you invite people if there's only the people that you want invited. If you don't want to have a public one that is, then you invite people. Otherwise you just share that link with people and then they can attend when it's time for the webinar. Anyway, if you have any questions, let me know down below. Otherwise I'll see you in the next video.